Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. We're the newcomers. Thanks for joining us today. It's once again time for Mailbag Monday. We have a great show for you today, and I'm so glad you tuned in. On today's show, storage woes in the villages. And a nudist colony in the villages. Was retiring a hard transition. And a great saving with Cindy. We're going to be talking about how you can save money using pirate ship. And of course, we'll have another bubble wrap. This may look like an ordinary bowl, but it's not. Alexa, turn on witch hat. It's a smart bulb. Coming up next on Bubble Wrap, I'll tell you how it works. All that and more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. Let's get things rolling today with a viewer video question. This one is from DJ and Bentley. I was calling or sending you a message from Wapakoneta, Ohio. We're about an hour from Fort Wayne, um, so we're fairly close, same area. My question to you is, I have a dog, Bentley, who is the best guy around. We go around about a quarter mile lake that he runs around every day. He goes swimming, and then we do about a 10 mile drive afterwards to dry him off. My question is, is there any place for this guy to be able to go play and run and, and jump in water? Is there a dog park that has a place where he can swim and run? So, if you can answer that question, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. I love your show. A place to swim and run. Well, the running won't be any problem. No. Dog parks. They can take you in the dog parks. Well, run, and it, run, run. Yeah, because you are going You want your dog to be off of leash. Yeah. And that's hard. But there are lots of dog parks. I think there are seven. Mm -hmm. Maybe and eight now. Maybe eight. Yeah. Um, It'll take. And there are some other park-like places where you might be able to do it. But the swimming, that's going to be your problem. Mm -hmm. You know, we were up at uh, the lake by uh, Lake Miona Rec Center. That's do you right. remember that? I do. A guy was out there with three dogs. They were similar to Golden's. I couldn't see because they were far away. He was letting them run and play and swim in that lake. Mm. And you know what they say about the lakes here in Florida. To, you can test the lake to see if it has gators in it. If you go down and you touch the water and it's wet, there could be gators in there. <laughs> and I really felt bad for this guy's dogs. Uh -huh. Just assume that there's going to be a gator in every pond, no matter how small. But we do know folks that let dogs swim in their pools. Yeah, yeah. So if you make friends with somebody that doesn't mind the little hair in his filter, <laughs> you know, you can probably yeah. let your dog swim. And, and I know one person down in Marsh Bend who built a pool for his two dogs. That's true. That's really true. <laughs> well, thanks for sending that in. We appreciate it, DJ. Wrong way, Jerry. Boy, he did the wrong thing the other night. I got to tell you. I wouldn't put it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We were heading out to get some gas in our car. We were up at the Sam's up in Spanish Springs area. And, oh, my goodness, people were there lined up to get gas because the gas was pretty good price. Right, Jerry? Two ninety nine. Yeah. So we thought we'd get a gas tank full because we were on a smoking nothing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> to make a long story longer, uh, we got in line and we waited and we waited. And uh, two customers ahead of us just took their just their time. And oh my goodness. And Jerry doesn't like to sit in line too long. <laughs> so he decided to go to the other pump and turn around and get because get, our gas tank's on the, on the driver's side. Well, anyway, we filled up the tank and guess what we saw? We were going the wrong way because it had arrows going this way. And, uh, yeah. And then we got boxed in a little. The guy came in. over and said, hey, you're going the wrong way. Yeah. And I told him I was pretty sure that whoever painted that arrow painted it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, not that big a deal. But, uh, wrong way, Jerry. But these people pulled up to the pump in front of us, and he sat in his car 10 minutes before he even got out <laughs> to pump the gas. And the car in front of him took forever, and then they pulled off, so I was going to go around and pull into yeah, there. Yeah. And they didn't leave. They got back out of their car again. Uh, and uh, anyway, it was a big, uh, evidently it was a big deal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> but if I made any driving mistakes, it's because that was before I went on my ride along with the Sumter yeah, County Sheriff. That was an experience. So we're going to have a show. Yeah. We actually went out in that super duper awesome 
electric golf cart that the sheriff's department has. It's cute. And uh, we'll be bringing that to you in a few weeks. I just wonder how fast it goes. Can you see it going really fast? The, uh, the, the ponds are all full. We've gotten some good, good rains. Everything looks green. It does, yeah. And Linda got bitten by a snake. I, I got bitten by something. <laughs> I don't know. I was uh, trying to get the water off of our, uh, we have uh, some pl flower pots out front. And I look at it and it was like this deep water in it and it wasn't draining. So I went to go shove it over. That thing was heavy. So uh, when I got back in the house, I looked at my foot because I was barefoot. <laughs> and uh, it had blood all the way across my foot. And I'm going, well, I didn't remember getting hurt. And I kept scrubbing on that blood and finally came off. And uh, except two spots. Take a look. Bang marks. Yeah, I don't know. Was it a snake? Was it a spider? Crazy. <laughs> With the storms has come some lightning, and we've seen several episodes of homes being hit by lightning here in the villages, and uh, a couple of them had substantial damage. Now, why don't we bring you pictures of that? Because I don't have the rights to those pictures. They were usually published in the newspaper, and... Well, the pictures that we show you are pictures that either I've taken or people have sent us and given us right to use, or uh, or they're with, from a publication that has indicated it was free to post. So we have had lightning. Our thoughts go out to all those people yes. that were affected yeah. by it. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, there's a lot of lightning in Florida, and uh, that leads to the lightning rod debate, which we'll get into sometime in the future on our show. Alaska, here we come. Couple yeah, more we're, days. this is our final show before we shove off. Yeah, and uh, we're going on a princess cruise mm -hmm. uh, to Alaska. We're leaving out of Vancouver, and we're going to go. I think eight days or eight nights uh, along Alaska and Canada the coastline, and uh, then we'll we'll dock and take a train up to Denali, and we'll be up there and. Uh, having a good time. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to get to see a lot of our old friends that went with us on other cruises. Yeah. And it's hard to pack for this kind of trip because you don't know. You, you, you Here we are in 90 degree weather and then you're trying to pack jeans and uh, layers of clothes and you think, oh my goodness, it's going to be 60s and 70s maybe, but um, I just don't know. How's my packing going? Um, yeah, great. I've been packing for the last week and I take the, put things in then I take things out and then I put it back and then I take it back out. I do this for a whole week before I go. Jerry has three shirts ready, maybe two. I didn't get any shirts ready. <laughs> oh, actually, I put them out. I did the, the, the a couple of uh, our, our shirts for him, and uh, I don't know. You bought a pair of pants. I'm going uh, to have a good time not to worry about if I'm dressed properly. I know. Well. It gets warm in Alaska. I'm going to take some shorts. I'm going to take a couple pairs of long pants for dining on the ship. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. I'm gonna take two pairs of shoes, one uh, sneakers, and yeah. and one to wear, you know, for fancy outings. Oh, or yeah, you just slip on shoes. Yeah, something, something like that. Something comfortable. But they say it rains a lot in in Alaska. Uh, I was re watching YouTube, and they said Alaska gets 200 days of rain a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it said on the YouTube. Well, you'll be going through some some rainforest areas like there are in Upper Washington, yeah. and yeah. And lower Canada and, uh, you know, but we'll be on a ship then. Mm -hmm. It's bad weather. You just go into the buffet. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Let's get to our first question today. This one is from Jenny and Sam. You say there are lots of pools. Do you use very many? How do you know which ones you can use? Do people mind if you use a pool in their neighborhood if you don't live there? Let's start with the second part of that question. No, people don't mind if you go to other pools because how would they even know? You know, we don't, uh, unless we're in the pool chatting, yeah. we wouldn't find out where they live. No. You know, they would be swimming, we'd be swimming, or they'd be laying out reading a book, we'd be doing the same. No, you can go to any pool. Any pool the only ones, to. of course, would be the ones at the country clubs that have, uh, that you need that enhanced membership to go to. And, and you know where, you'll know where they are. They're in the country clubs. Yeah, yeah. So we've been to many uh, pools that are adult pools, so you can go to any of them. But we think there are 114 pools or so, and where are they? Well, somebody emailed us, and I, I don't have the name of the person, but thank you for sending that, um, a link at uh, districtgov.org of all the pools. And here is an overview of the entire map. 
And then we'll start at the top with Spanish Springs. You can see the pools there, all the way down to Sumter. Here's the middle section. You can see where you live or, or the pools you may want to go to. And then the southern section. Now that goes all the way out to uh, uh, the newer sections, like uh, Franklin Rec Center. So there may be even more pools by now. I'm not really sure, but that is a whole bunch of pools and a lot, yeah. lot of places yeah. where you can go swim. Right. This is from Russ and Mary Lou McLaughlin. My husband and I are wondering if there are any fire ants in the villages. Thanks for all you do. I haven't seen any fire ants. I've not seen any. No. And we're not your average old people. I mean, once in a while we'll go out and sit in the grass or whatever, and we have not had any, yeah. uh, although, you know, in Texas. Yeah. One time we were in Texas, this is a true story, and your Uncle G mm -hmm. said, I want to show you all something, and he had uh, a pond, and he had some bait fish, like we call them minnows. Yeah. And he put a minnow in a paper plate and set it out on his driveway. And he said, we'll look at that in the morning. And next morning we went out and looked at it. It was a skeleton. Yeah. Those fire ants had eaten every bit of flesh off of that uh, minnow. And well, that was, they were thankful for that breakfast or dinner, right? <laughs> yeah, so I'm happy to say that I don't believe that we have any here. This is from Living Today. I currently have a 1,250 square foot home. My biggest complaint is no storage space. When I buy in the villages, I'm going to buy 1,500 plus square feet with a two-car garage to ensure space for storage. Linens, cleaning supplies, holiday pans and dishes, toiletries, etc. Well, so you think 1,500 square feet is going to do it as long as you have a two-car garage. We have about 2,000 square feet plus a lanai, plus a two-and-a-half car garage, and a little baby attic and we are hurting for storage <laughs> yeah we have saved a lot of stuff still we still need to purge but um we feel like we don't have a lot of space here and we are 1967 yeah i mean but you need to learn ways to pare it down and you know mm -hmm. we're as people we get things we're attached to and sometimes mm -hmm. they only have value to us yeah and we keep them when we probably shouldn't mm -hmm. and i'm still the same way i mean i've got a <laughs> an Alaskan hat, you know, that comes over and it's got the flaps down here and it's got beaver pelt. You can take it to Alaska. I bought that the <laughs> first time I went to Alaska and I don't need that. I've got two pairs of cowboy boots. What am I going to do with those? I do too. I've got a bunch, but mine are cowgirl boots. I've but. got a really great leather jacket. I mean, this baby was expensive. I love it. Ooh, heavy. Yeah, it's very heavy. Mm -hmm. And it, I would get pennies for it. And it is a valuable jacket, but I shouldn't have brought that. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to learn. You're going to have to pare it down. You'll be hanging things on the walls. You might be hanging things on the ceiling. Yeah. It's tough. And uh, thank you all that watched on Thursday when we showed you how we had to solve our storage yeah. problem yeah. with all that photo equipment. I mean, you can't just have one tripod. you got to have two or three. You can't just have one of anything because if we go on an interview and something breaks or, or whatever, we've got to get it out. We can't inconvenience everybody by saying we can't do this because it, yeah. you know we had extra. So we had stuff everywhere, and now we've solved that. Yeah. So you're going to look for creative ways to solve stuff and, uh, and to store it away, and good luck to you. <laughs> I'm a believer that anyone who walks their pets on those hot days should have to do it barefooted. Then they can see how hot it is on their pet's feet. Well, you know what? It is hot on their feet. And we, I, I remember walking Gizmo, and I remember trying to keep him sometimes in the grass, but he didn't want he to. He did walk not on. want to. He no matter how hot it grass. was, he wanted to walk on the concrete or yeah. the asphalt. Yeah. And uh, when people come to our driveway, when the grandkids come, I'm almost always barefooted. Uh, when our grass cutters come, I'm usually barefooted, but I'll run out there with drinks for them, yeah. or I'll run out to get the grandkids. Holy mackerel, my baby feet yeah. are screaming when I get yeah. back in the house. That yeah. concrete does get hot. It gets very hot, so you've got to be conscious of it, and we don't really take our pets out in these hot days. We take them out really late at night or very early in the morning, so we yeah. don't do a noontime or afternoon walk. So, yeah, you're right. We should all try it barefoot and see how hot it is. But. Yeah, I've tried it. Yeah. And, you know, but we miss Gizmo. Those, a lot of people ask, are we ever going to get another pup? We probably will, but it, but right now we're going to wait a while and uh, see what happens. You know, we still got a lot of traveling to do, yeah. and uh, and we'll just wait and see. We'll wait and see. Yeah. 
We're going to have more great questions for you in just a minute, but let's go to Peter for Bubble Wrap. Hi, Jerry and Linda. This is a smart bulb. It can be very useful and fun at the same time. Watch. Alexa, turn on witch hat. I have them throughout my house. These are Philips bulbs, and I have a special device here that allows me to control the bulbs throughout my house. Let's watch this. Alexa, turn on cat house. At the heart of the smart bulb system is this little white box. It's called a hub. It sends out radio commands to the various smart bulbs in my house. But to use my voice, I use Alexa. I set up the Hue skill on Alexa so I can shout out the things I want. If you don't want to use your voice, you can always use the Hue app. Here, you can choose which lights you want to control, set their intensity, and color. You can do as many or as little as you want. Alexa, turn on hallway. Over here in the living room, there's a whole bunch of them, so watch this. Alexa, turn on living room. And I can make them any color, too. Alexa, set the living room to blue. As you can see, I've gone a little crazy. I can turn TVs on and off and ceiling fans. Alexa, turn on magic. These lamps can be set up in your house, or like I have out here too, in your lanai. And you can put them on timers, you can have them go on when a motion detector senses them. It's really kind of fun. I'm Peter Bernard, and that's this week's Bubble Wrap. Thank you, Peter. That's good advice. In this age where, you know, we're trying to automate everything, good to be able to have those little conveniences. And I love it. I love having the smart things in the house. Oh, yeah. And uh, it, it, it makes things so much easier. Ken Barr writes in with a good question. Ken says, show us on your show how to get and use your Amazon page. Thanks. We'd like to show you how you can help us by ordering your Amazon items through our website. You ask for step-by-step -step instructions and here you go. First of all, look us up on Google. When you find our webpage, just click on it. There we go. Then you'll see the drop down has Amazon. Click on that. And these are products that we have and we recommend. We'll never put anything on there that we don't trust. Anything you buy on Amazon, if you start at this page, will be credited to our account. And it doesn't cost you a penny more. For example here, maybe you're looking for pool toys or even a fishing lure or that Toto Toilet. As long as you buy it while you're on this link, we will get credit and we really appreciate that. And it helps us from having to look and find sponsors. Hubcaps? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't I know what else to say. Okay. What would you have said? Uh, probably not toothbrushes. I don't find that on. I got froze. I froze up. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I think I would have said uh, uh, vacuum cleaners, uh, pots and pans, new dishes, things like that. Okay. Toothbrush and tub caps. Sorry. <laughs> I froze. <laughs> and now back to some great questions. This one's from Todd Stralo. Stray Lau, Stray Low. Stray Lau. Stray Lau. This question is for Jerry. I got my own question. Oh, well, I won't answer anything then. When you retire, was it a hard transition from working to being retired? No. I have about six to seven years left. Any pointers on retirement? Well, keep up the good work on the pointers on the villages. Todd, I remember, and I've we've told you all this before, and I'm sorry that we keep telling you the same things over and over, but... When we got ready to retire, we were both doing well in the teaching department. I mean, by then, you're old dogs at the school. You've got a little bit of respect. Uh, parents trust you. The principals trust you. You're doing the best you can. Things are rolling smooth. But it's you're getting up there. We put in over 30 years each. 
we decided we would go ahead and retire. I remember going to see my principal and saying, hey, you know what? I, I'm, on one hand, I hate to retire because it's going so good. And you're at the top of the pay scale, too, when you retire. And he said, you know what? In all my years of being a principal, I've never had one person come back to me after they retired and said, man, I wish I hadn't retired. So that's kind of where we are. We didn't know what to expect, but we're hobby people. You know, we do things. We, we get out and get after it. And I personally, it was a great decision. And I'm glad we retired when we did. And we've had a lot of fun in the last, get this, 13 years. <laughs> God. We've been retired 13 years. Wow. So, you know, it may seem like the end of the world. You've been going there for 30 years, maybe 40 years doing yeah. your job. Well, it's time to start the new part of your life where you're going to try to have fun every day for the next 30 or 40 yeah. years. Yeah. This is from Linda and John. We are proud dog owners, so we are wondering if you are allowed to have invisible fencing in the backyard of your home in the villages. And I think that's a yes. In fact, I've seen a couple signs that said invisible fencing. In fact, our neighbor asked us if we had invisible fencing when we first moved in because Gizmo, he, he was he, a great dog. Oh, my gosh. And he minded us. We told him, no, you don't go over there. And we kind of showed him, no, don't go past that. And he didn't. He, he really stayed where we told him to be. And uh, the neighbors thought we had an invisible, invisible fence. We didn't. But you can have it. Yes, you can. I was walking the other day, and uh, a dog came running out of a guy's house, and I said, hello, and the guy, the, the owner came out, and he goes, don't worry, uh, invisible fence. I was in their front yards. So you can have it in the front yard or the backyard. Yeah. doesn't matter. Uh, mm -hmm. You can put it anywhere you like. It's not intrusive to anybody, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's a good thing. I'm not sure if this question was in jest or in truth, but uh, here it is. Are there any nudist clubs in the villages? <laughs> Well, it, I have to laugh. I'm so yeah, sorry. yeah. I mean, hey, I mean, in the Baywatch community, there, you know, they could be nudist colonies. You know, that would be okay. But here in the villages, a nudist colony. Yeah. I mean, we're old, man. <laughs> we are old, and uh, uh, I, we don't know of any. We've never heard of any. Uh, we would not want to visit one. No, thank you. Yeah. So no. <laughs> Uh, I think that was probably a jokey question, but hey, there are plenty of nudists. Well, we brought this up the other day in a gathering. Remember I that? I do remember. I told it. people we were going to have this, and one and several people said, "Hey, I know where there's one. It's down by St. Petersburg. Or I know where there's one in the Clearwater area." So blah, what did that tell you that they were checking out where to go? <laughs> they were going to go. No, there. no, but I mean, they heard of it, and, and uh, you know, some people like that lifestyle, but I, no, I wouldn't. I would be incredibly <laughs> self-conscious. Yeah. Does it look any better? Is it? Huh? I think okay. so. Okay. He did, I just keep on walking up the spot. The, I mean, <laughs> he just jacked my jaw. I mean, I mean, I mean. <laughs> I don't know where to start now. I kind of feel like I need a band -aid. You want to get some ice for you? <laughs> July 4th is coming up. What's going to happen? And then you just started talking about something else. Oh. And you don't want to start talking about 4th of July? I, I, I guess I wasn't even listening. No. This next one, it says, Help! Big blue heron keeps standing on top of our cage and pooping. Making a mess over black screens and black lounges. Opening door and yelling does not scare them away. Anyone out there has a solution, please? <laughs> we know, um, and it's similar to a scarecrow, scarecrow in a garden. Mm -hmm. A lot of people put out uh, a big owl. Mm -hmm. uh, they sell them in uh, probably Tractor Supply right. in Rural King. Ace Hardware, maybe. On Amazon, I'm sure you could buy oh, them. Yeah. yeah, Ace Hardware. You put out a big statue. It's actually styrofoam or yeah. plastic. Yeah. You put it out on your bird cage or your lanai or your garden, and uh, it will scare away things like crows yeah. and uh, some other birds. Some people, you could put a bird of prey up there. You could put like a, a hawk oh, yeah. or something, and it will scare, uh, yeah. scare them away. 
But yeah, I know exactly what you mean. We have seen quite the decorations created by herons oh, yeah. and sandhill cranes yeah. and other things. Yeah. That, and you really don't want them in your yard. You don't want to feed them because, boy, when they come around, they tear up your yard. Uh, you know, between tearing them up, the yard up and pooping. Eh. But they are beautiful birds. Over here by Charlotte <laughs> Pond, there's a home, and you've seen it. Yeah. They have these silver, almost like aluminum foil yeah. streamers that are 10 feet long. They've got on a pole on their roof, and they blow, and they're big, uh, and the sun reflects on them, and they flash, and yeah. uh, I think that's to do the same thing. Yeah. And some people put spikes. Have you seen the spikes? I have seen those. They put these big pointy spikes out, but I don't like those. They even have them on their lawn chairs. Have uh, you seen yeah, them? Yeah, I saw them. They put them on the back of their lawn chairs, like right here, so the birds don't sit on their lawn chairs. And Oh, I would fall on them. That'd probably end up in my face somewhere. Yeah, not good. <laughs> but anyway, we are so sorry they're going through that. We hope you find something to deter them. I, I would look, check in those stores and find a, 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 an owl. They'll help you. Now it's time for Pet of the Week. Hi, Jerry and Linda. This is Oliver, and I'd like to nominate him for... Pet of the week. Oliver is a Shih Tzu Poodle. He's almost eight years old and he loves to fetch his ball. He doesn't always like to bring it back unless he knows I have a treat in my hand. Sometimes he'll tease you and not give it back. Oliver also likes to steal socks for attention and he likes to snuggle at night. That's Oliver. See you when we get there. Well, that was fun. And I hope that you liked it. And remember you folks out there that have a pet that you'd like to have featured on Pet of the Week, please film it in landscape and keep it to a minute or less and email it to villagesnewcomers at gmail.com. And we will put you on the list to include as our Pet of the Week. It's time for Word Jumble. Yeah, last week's clue. Free except for the trail fee. That was easy, wasn't it? The answer was executive golf. Mm -hmm. Today's clue. A man-eating fish was seen here in the villages. Ooh. A man-eating fish. Oh, boy. If you get it right, let us know, but don't put the answer in the comment section because that'll spoil it for everybody else. And thanks for playing. It's time for Sweet and Salty. I'm gonna take the sweet, Jerry. And this is from Lisa. I enjoy watching the two of you Find the mutual respect and teasing between the two of you refreshing. <laughs> uh, yeah, mutual respect and teasing. He does a lot of teasing. He's a tease. He really is. He likes to joke around, so keeps us going. <laughs> Thank you for that, Lisa. And here's one from Scott Bama. Sorry, Jerry, but your hair piece is a few shades darker than the real hair. It's very noticeable. So the real hair, the toupee. Yeah. Watch this. Now, there you saw it, Scott Bama. 
It's all real. The sides are real. The top is real. It's all real. But you're right about the color. For some reason, it's staying a little redder up here than here. Yeah. But you wouldn't believe how many letters we get like this. This is probably five in the last two months talking about my toupee. <laughs> oh, well. It's time for Saving with Cindy. Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about how you might be able to save money shipping your next packages using Pirate Ship. Well, Pirate Ship is a free online comprehensive shipping provider that allows its customers to be able to ship their packages with a savings of up to 89% over regular rates. It's free, there's no hidden fees, and all you have to do is sign up with your email. There's no commitment. It's really a great tool. So let's see if we can help you find ways to save money shipping your next packages using Pirate Ship. The first thing you'll do is prepare your package as usual. If you're reusing a box, make sure all the old labels are removed. Go ahead and create a free account on Pirate Ship and log in. You'll enter the name and address of where you want to send your package. Enter the type of packaging, including weights and measurements. Once you've compared the rates and picked your best shipping option, you will buy the label. You can pay with your debit, credit card, or PayPal. You can print your shipping label on any printer. After you've applied your label, you can drop off your package at an approved facility or schedule a pickup. That's it. You're done. Now, wasn't that easy? So if you want to save money on shipping your next package, try Pirate Ship. You might be surprised at the savings. I hope you enjoyed this tip. Until next time, happy shopping, happy savings. Thank you, Cindy. We have found the same thing, that when you mail packages, it's pricey. Yeah, it is. You know, that makes us appreciate Amazon because... Yeah. They mail us little things like we ordered four more of those lights, those uh, yeah. uh, motion deck lights. Mm -hmm. I, I ordered them on yeah. last night. Last night, I ordered them last night, and they arrived between eight and twelve this today. Uh, eight o'clock. Boom, <laughs> like that. Yeah. Now, if I had if I had sent those myself, it would have pro probably cost me twelve dollars yeah. to send them. Yeah. Oh, you know, at least. <laughs> you know, that's practically what the light cost. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, shipping things is tough, and the bigger it is, the more expensive it is. So thank you for the tip. It's time for entertainment. Well, if you all get the newspaper, you're going to be able to find this section on Wednesday. It's all about the entertainment. It will show you advertisements, what's coming up the next month. Usually I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in the coming week. So I don't know if you can get tickets like that, but uh, please take a look at this. It's also on your phone. It's on an app, uh, the Villages app. And you will find that the entertainment in the Villages is amazing. See the guy at the top, Bill Anderson? He's the guy that's singing, I'm just a swinging. Remember that old country song? <laughs> yeah. So at the Savannah Center coming up, in fact, tonight is a salute to the Villages dancing from the red, white, and blue. And that's the village's premier resident dance company. So residents get together, have a club, and they dance, and they're going to be probably all de decked out in red, white, and blue. And then on Wednesday, the, on the 3rd, is a patriotic, spectacular Celebrates America. And that are bands, the village's uh, concert band, the New Horizons band, and hometown band. So I just love a good band. I think that's going to be a fun show. And then at the Sharon on July 3rd is um, America's Sweethearts and then um, please sign up for the free monthly digital newsletter it's called The Scoop and that will tell you a lot of things that's going to happen at the Sharon and you can find these uh, the new newsletter on thesharon.com so that's kind of fun so enjoy the villages enjoy the town squares and a lot of the restaurants have live music and uh, we, we really enjoy the music here in the villages yeah we do it's time for those shout outs Thanks once again to all the friends of our channel. We we love you guys. We're so thankful. You know, you take time from your busy schedule not only to watch our shows, but to leave us comments and suggestions and, 
and send us emails and keep this keep our channel going right. with those questions yeah. and those pictures so thank you If you have a nice picture of yourself that you'd like us to show during this segment, please send it also to villagesnewcomers at gmail.com. That's going to do it for this week's edition of... Again, we're off to Alaska, and we hope that every one of you has a safe and happy 4th of July. Yes. It's a great holiday. Uh, we don't do many fireworks here in the villages. I think we have a super large uh, number of ex-military here, and we have lots and lots of pets. So I think uh, yeah. by this age, a lot of us have uh, appreciated the quiet and so we just don't have all the all the uh, fireworks. Yeah, fireworks and the booms and whistles. No. You can go to Leesburg or Wildwood mm -hmm. or Lady Lake yeah. or Fruitland Park, and they yeah. all will have celebrations, yeah. and it'll be fun. But once again, thank you for joining us today. Be safe. If you liked our video today, please press that like and subscribe button and share it with all your friends. Until next time. I forgot one thing i got to say before I say the other thing. Okay. Even though we're gone, we have already loaded up some Thursday shows for you. Now, when Monday comes around, I'm not sure. We're going to try to broadcast from the ship, and hopefully that'll work. But we'll do our best to keep you entertained on Mondays and Thursdays all throughout. You want to do it again? If you liked our video today, please press that like and subscribe button and share it with all your friends. Until next time. See you when you get here.